Hello and welcome to Sort of Sys classes. Here in this video, I will be solving the paper of DAC 2009. Uh, so I have already solved uh, some questions. No, so uh, in this video, I will start with the question number 12. So in the question number 12, the question is the demand function of a lemon is QD equals to this and the supply function is this. So the government levies a sales tax of lemonade after which the volume drops to 60. So then what is the power in power unit tax of the lemonade or on lemonade? So to solve the question first, we have to solve it. So QD equals to 100 minus P and QS equals to 10 plus 2P. So the equilibrium price is 100 minus P plus 10 plus 2P, 3P times 90, P equals to 30. This is the equilibrium price without tax. Now after this, we are imposing a tax of suppose T then we have PS minus PB equals to T where PS is the price of seller and PB is the price of buyer so PS equals to PB plus T so we have after this then we have this PB equals to 10 plus 2. Now we have PB plus T. So we have this 10 plus 2 PB plus 2 T. So we have 90 equals to 3 PB plus T. So this is one equation. Name it equation number 1. Then you have another information that after imposition of tax after imposition of tax quantity of cells falls to 60 so we can use this information so so now new quantity of sale is 60 10 plus 2 pb plus t so we basically have 2 pb plus 2t equals to 50. So this is our equation number 2. Now you have to equate it. Suppose you multiply. So basically we have we can simplify it pb equals to t plus 50 and then you just can put this value. So we have 3 pb plus yeah so I am missing one thing yeah we have 2t so we have 2t equals to 90 or you can choose not to simplify it because we will be using it so it's just this just subtract it then you have pb equals to 40 now if pb equals to 40 then from this we will be needing it actually so yeah so put 40 over here and 10 and you have here we have 25 so we have 25 so t equals to basically so basically it's 40 minus 25 though we have a negative sign we are just ignoring that so it's 15 so 15 is the right answer we have 15 in our options i guess yeah so 15 is the correct answer now moving to the question number Moving to the question number 13. So there are only two price taking firms in a market. The cost function is C1 X1 square and the C2 X2 square. Where Xi is the unit of the output of the ith firm. So what is the market supply is sum of the two firms output. Then the market supply function is which one. So we just have the cost function. Now the case is how to approach it. So we have to, we have to, very, we have to be very crucial. Uh, very conscious about the all kinds of information that you're having so here we have that only two price taking firms price taking means we have to use the concept of we have to use the concept of perfect competition so in the perfect competition we know that p equals to mc 
now we can easily calculate c1 equals to its x1 square so mc1 equals to obviously 2x1 similarly from here we have mc2 equals to 4x2 so we can equate it individually like first one p equals to 2x1 so we have x1 equals to p by 2 for this we can write 4x2 equals to p so x2 equals to 4 p by 4 therefore the total supply x1 plus x2 is basically p by 2 by p by 4 so we have 4 so it's 2p by p so 3p by 4 suppose this is equals to s and capital x and if this is true then we can write x equals to 3p by 4 so this is the correct answer now moving to the second question i mean question number 14 so in the question number 14 it says a monopoly faces a demand curve which is p equals to 8q but the monopoly has a constant unit cost equal to 5 so whenever the output increases by one unit you have to pay the cost of 5 so mp mc is equals to 5 but for q less than equals to 2 but for q greater than 2 we you have the cost equals to 3 then how what is the profit maximizing output so first just calculate the total revenue which is 8q minus q square so what is the marginal revenue that is 8 minus 2q again this is true for both the cases so for the first case we have mc equals to 5 so 8 minus 2q equals to 5 then we have 8 minus 5 equals to 2q so q equals to 3 by 2 now for this part we have q greater than 2 so cost equals to 3 therefore 8 minus 2q is basically equals to 3 so q equals to 5 by 2 therefore for the first case q equals to 3 by 2 for the second case it is 5 by 2 so both are correct answer so in this video i have solved three questions all the three questions are mathematical i hope these small tricks will be helpful be very cautious about the all kinds of information that you are having in the examination hall so until next time thank you